<laughs> Don't buy these for college. Okay, so this is a Razorblade 15 and I bought this back in 2018 when I was a freshman. It has a matte display that's 1080p as well as being 144Hz and also sports an Intel i7 CPU with 8 cores and an NVIDIA GTX 1070 GPU. Now, if you're hearing this as a tech illiterate, that's not going to make much sense at all. And that's pretty much how a lot of these tech reviews are like on YouTube right now. So, in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys what you should look out for when buying these laptops for college. And perhaps give you all a little education on what these specs are in the first place. And I'm also going to cover my ass here by saying that this is based off my own research and experience and you should take this as just another opinion that will help you make your decision. And before I begin, let me just introduce myself. My name is Daryl, my friends call me Dago and I'm going to be a final year computer science student studying in the National University of Singapore. I'm not the best student, you know, I'm just kind of like messing around in college. But I think I do know a thing or two about tech. This video will be split into two parts and in the first part, I'll be telling you guys about some simple components that I think everyone should understand when it comes to computers. And in the second part, I'll go into what you should look out for when purchasing your laptop. Let's get started. Okay, I'm just going to have my iPad here because um, I need my script. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with some simple terms. Firstly, we have resolution. To put it simply, what resolution is, is how many pixels there are on your screen. It usually comes in these numbers where they say like, oh, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Okay, and what do these represent? 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. If you count the individual dots from left to right on the screen, it's going to be 1920. And if you count the individual dots from here, it's also going to be 1080. The higher the number, the more pixels there are. The more pixels there are, the sharper and the more detailed your screen would be. 1080p is is 1920 times 1080. Okay, so storage space. There are two main ways your laptop would hold storage and it's going to be through a HDD as well as an SSD. A HDD stands for hard disk drive and a SSD stands for solid state drive and they are both data storage devices that would live in a computer. So. What is the difference here? A HDD uses spinning disks inside which store the data magnetically whereas an SSD has no moving parts inside it and the data is stored in these integrated circuits. So the difference is that HDDs are going to be slower. So you're thinking, oh why would I get a HDD? Well, because it's cheaper. So yes, the HDD is cheaper but it's slower and the SSD is more expensive but it's faster. And why does this matter? Okay, so when your CPU retrieves the data from these storage spaces, this would determine the speed of that retrieval and this will effectively determine how fast your laptop will function in certain scenarios. Okay, moving on to RAM. Okay, so what RAM stands for is that RAM is equal to random access memory and having a higher RAM is better. RAM is actually a type of memory that's faster than your solid state drive or your hard disk drive. And in my understanding from CS2106, the module that I got D for, RAM is mostly used in order to store intermediate data that is currently and constantly used by the computer in addition to the cache, that thing that they always ask you to clear to fix your browser. For example, when we play games, we utilize a lot of RAM as we need to retrieve that information in real time and as such the data inside of RAM at this point is going to be mostly consisting of data from the game I think. And the data in your RAM is ever-changing based off the tasks that you're doing at that point of time. Moving on to the CPU, it stands for Central Processing Unit and this CPU is generally the thing that powers the whole laptop. It does all of your basic calculations, the logic that goes behind the computer and all your inputs from you know typing and whatnot. Moving on to the GPU, so GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit and the GPU mostly does these um, calculations for the more graphics intensive work. So thing stuff like gaming, uh, video editing and graphics rendering, stuff like that. Ref Refresh rate. A high refresh rate basically means how fast the screen refreshes each second. Your laptop monitors, your phone monitors and videos that you see aren't actually one seamless thing that is playing out at once, but rather a series of still images that put together look as if they are moving. So for example, the video you're watching now is 25 FPS. That means it's 25 still images per second. And you know, it's like a flipbook in digital form. For monitors, having a 60 hertz screen means your screen is refreshing itself for around 60 times per second. With the frequency formula being 1 over T, where T is the period, which is the time taken for one cycle to occur. But you forgot that formula, didn't you? Okay, so obviously a refresh rate with a higher number means the video will look smoother. And if you need a comparison, just compare videos that have 60 FPS on YouTube as compared to those with 30 FPS. Cores. So having more cores will make it easier for your computer to run more programs at the same time. To put it in a simple analogy, think of it as you as a person having eight different tasks. Without having multiple cores, it's essentially just you handling all eight of those tasks. 
and as you can kind of tell that's going to be pretty inefficient multi-core is like there being eight of you and each one of you is assigned to each task and all eight of you are doing each of the eight tasks at the same time and that's why the more cores you have the better your computer will be at multitasking thermos this refers to the system that your computer has to handle heat when your laptop starts to heat up some laptops have really really good thermos like it's pretty much a wind farm in there but there are also some that are absolutely poo poo as well for example i'm pretty certain that some older macbooks have zero ventilation due to the pursuit of aesthetics okay but why is this important when your computer heats up to an unsafe temperature and does not have the ability to dissipate the heat fast enough what happens is that it will start to throttle this is called thermal throttling and throttling basically means that your computer will start to go like right, i'm not gonna have to slow down and take a break and your computer will intentionally lower its performance such that it lessens the load on the components on your computer this in turn will then cause your laptop to become laggier and slower etc gamers would probably have experienced this before from drop frame rates as an example. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the laptop guide. Firstly, you want to identify what you're going to be using the laptop for. Most definitely, you're going to be using it for studying. But there are also some other things that you might want to consider, such as software engineering, content creation, and gaming. And I'll touch on this later in the video. Okay, so to me, these are the key factors to consider as a college student. And these factors are going to be weight, battery life, price, as well as build quality, slash aesthetics. Okay, let's start with weight. Typically, you're going to be bringing your laptop around to classes a lot. And especially so if you have face-to-face -face lessons and lectures. Yeah, you're going to be traveling around the campus a lot. Getting something light is crucial if you don't want to have back pain and artificially accelerate your physical decline once you hit your 20s. Okay, but no cap. Having a laptop that's as heavy as 2.5 kg as compared to something like an iPad makes a world of difference. Also, you most likely have to factor the charger into play or as we like to call it, the power brick. Because they usually come in this big chunk of a block. Chances are you'll also be bringing this around if you don't stay on campus. And although some laptops may be light, their power brick could potentially be a lot heavier than you think. Okay, moving on to battery life. Let's say you don't want to bring this thing around. This is one factor you should really consider. I would recommend something that could do at least 10 hours of usage unplugged. Razer Blade here used to be able to do around 4-5 to five hours just from studying and a bit of video watching. And honestly, that's not really good. Okay, and that is one compromise of having a gaming laptop as the components tend to be a bit more powerful and it requires more battery usage. Thirdly, price. I believe a price of around 1.5 to 2.5k SGD would be able to fetch you a pretty good laptop. Okay, and before you buy them, be sure to look out for student or education pricing on these laptops. I'm pretty sure that most brands offer a student pricing, such as Apple. And fourthly is the build quality and aesthetics. So obviously, because this is a college laptop, you're going to want to be able to stick with it for the next four years or so in college. It is imperative that you get something that's built well so it could sustain a certain level of physical damage. I like to look for laptops with a metal chassis and some other things you can look out for is the amount of flex on the monitor and the keyboard and whatnot. Also, having a laptop that fits your aesthetics will do you a world of good as well. I for one absolutely despise gamer font. I just think it's ugly right now and I want it to look simple and clean. To me, there's no question that the MacBook looks the best. The Windows laptops definitely look a lot nicer now as compared to back then but there's still no competition. If you need skins, uh, just go to D brand. I am not sponsored. I just really like the brand. You should see how they do their marketing. It's amazing. And I actually got my mask from them. The ones with all the little icons here. And this was their collaboration with the tech reviewer MKBHD. To me, these are the basic factors that you want to consider when buying a college laptop. Okay, so what if you have other purposes for the laptop? Let's dive straight into that. Okay, so as for gaming, you want to have a strong GPU. Minimally, perhaps a GTX 1660. But personal opinion, I think it would be better to get the 2K or 3K GPUs because of ray tracing. Quick sidetrack on ray tracing because it's super cool. It basically allows your games to look as if it has real lighting. Usually, they use formulas to sort of render what the lighting and shading would be like at a particular point. Using this thing called the phone reflection model. But what ray tracing also does is that it simulates light scattering. So things like what happens when the light bounces off a surface. And it allows you to do all sorts of crazy things like reflections and whatnot in graphics. It's really quite dope, but it takes up a lot of computational bandwidth. And here are some examples of what ray tracing is like when switched on.
it looks so good right like seriously so you also want to have a high refresh rate on your screen so aim for at least 144 hertz apparently now you can even go up to 300 with some models thermals are super important too so please go do your research on what models are good for that and these are some of the compromises you probably would have to make for gaming laptops firstly it's the lower resolution better performance in a game always trumps the graphics having smoother but less detailed graphics to me would always be better for the gaming experience rather than a high resolution but a lower fps battery life is also something you have to compromise because like i said before the more powerful components will suck the battery quickly and gaming laptops will tend to be heavier as well because the powerful components are going to be heavier your power brick this thing is going to be chunky man okay and here are some laptops that i feel are pretty good the hp omen 15 the lenovo legion 5 as well as asus g14 g16 i, I don't know for the hp omen and the lenovo legion i think it will be good to look out for the amd cpu instead of the intel one apparently the amd cpus are really good right now <clears throat> okay moving on to content creation typically you want to have good color accuracy high resolution good thermals and some good usb ports you want to have a screen that is 100 srgb for good colors even on other devices such as your phone you will probably also want a high resolution the best would be 4k and this would allow you to scrutinize your work in more detail and honestly for this i would just pair it up with the monitor and same as gaming laptops you want to have good thermals your laptop will probably heat up when it's doing things like rendering okay and here are some compromises for content creation laptops you probably don't need a high refresh rate you can get something that's around 60 hertz to be honest but seriously having a high refresh rate on your screen just feels a lot nicer to use and for suggestions i think the hp nv14 uh, it seems pretty price competitive for the specifications as compared to some of its competitors out there fun fact i almost worked with hp on a campaign for this laptop but they didn't proceed with me in the end so yeah if there are any tech companies out there that want to sponsor me you can find me in my email and of course, you can never go wrong with the MacBook Pro as well. At this point, the M1 MacBooks are like goated. Pretty much every tech reviewer out there are recommending M1 MacBooks at this point. Okay, let's say you're going to be do using a laptop for software engineering. This definitely takes the iPad out of the equation. And to be honest, I don't think I'm the best person to ask for this. And I know it's kind of ironic because I'm a computer science student. Okay, but based off my interactions with some of my other software developer friends out there, I'm pretty sure Mac is one of the best when it comes to software engineering. It is because it's built off a Unix-based environment and it makes it easier to set up a development environment when you're doing software development yeah i don't think you can go wrong with the macbook let's say you're going to be using your laptop purely for note taking readings and maybe a bit of art for this i would actually recommend the ipad pro or the ipad air at this point the ipad could very easily replace a laptop for most students and if you're simply going to be downloading lecture notes creating your own notes or doing some art on the side you could consider just sticking to the ipad the ipad battery life is undefeated the weight is undefeated, the sexiness is also undefeated. And there are so many productivity and note-taking based apps on the iPad OS right now that you really don't need a laptop anymore in some cases. And to me, the only thing that it really kind of lacks is having a detailed file system like on the laptops. I know there's a file system somewhere, but perhaps I'm not using it to its full potential. These are some other minor factors that you can consider. Firstly, is having a laptop with a touchscreen. Some laptops do have touchscreens and it's a lot more useful than you think. Secondly, is the touchpad. Personally, I like having humongous touchpads because it will be easier for me to do my finger gestures. I'm a big fan of the ones that are a bit more matte like Mac to me always had the best touchpads but Windows touchpads are starting to get bigger and better as well thirdly ports okay so the basic ports that I want to have on my laptop would be at least four USB slots and one of which is USB-C probably an Ethernet port as well as a HDMI port and for my content creation purposes I would love to have an SD card slot as well and the last thing you could consider is the keyboard for me no gamer font i feel that this isn't so important because you really can just get an external keyboard there are some wireless mechanical keyboards out there that have become pretty affordable i would say at least get something you're comfortable with typing when you're at a lecture so before you buy a laptop i think it will do you a world of good just to head down to challenger or harvey norman just to test out the laptops and the fuel and everything oh yeah and this is specific to the ipad but if you're getting the ipad please factor in the price of the accessories that you're going to get as well because it's very highly likely that you're going to be getting the case and an apple pencil as well do remember to factor that into your pricing okay so in my opinion this is what i would go for minimally in terms of basic specs storage 512 gigabytes ssd cpu intel i5 or i7 ram 16 gigabytes big fat touchpad four usb slots with one being usb c ethernet and hdmi port about 10 hours of battery life the total weight for the laptop and power brick to be around 2.5 kg maximum and of course lastly no gamer font
And I think this is very possible to get in the realm of 1.5 to 2.5k SGD. Now, I'm pretty sure there are bigger tech geeks out there that are ready to raise their pitchforks at me. But please remember that I'm just trying to make it easier for others to understand. I myself used to know nothing about all of these, so I know how confusing it can be. If I have spread any misinformation or opinions that you do not agree with, feel free to call me out in the comments below and offer an alternative. Ultimately, the best scenario is one where prospective students buying their laptops get as much information as possible. And as for laptop suggestions, I don't really have them because I've never tried other laptops apart from these. And please don't buy these for college. Please do your own research on YouTube and Reddit regarding laptops. And I will say that the M1 MacBook is a popular one amongst reviewers. And that's it for the video. I hope it was informative. Do leave a like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!